guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing my latest pattern, which is the knitting needle roll. It does look big, it is big, because it will fit the largest size needles in it. So it has a zippered section on the side so that you can carry all your sewing related things. So some people carry pencils or needle, like line counters or whatever. And then it's got two pockets, so it's got this back pocket as well as a front pocket and different size holes. And then the flap is to keep all of your needles down and in the roll as you go. So if you'd like to see how to make this, please stay tuned. Alrighty, so let's get started. Um, I'm going to start with my straps uh, just because it's one of the easier things to do. So I took my strap and I folded it, I folded over the end and then fold it both into the center and over again to make like a nice skinny little strap. You could also make these out of vinyl if you wanted to, um, or you could just use cording or whatever makes you happy really. So I just wanna make sure that that end's tucked in. And I'm gonna sew over the short end that's going to be sitting out. So I'm just gonna manually crank them because there's only like three stitches. And then I'm just gonna sew shut down one side. I'm not going to sew the other side because it's skinny enough I don't need to. Uh, the needle I'm using today is just a size 14, so I'm not on a bag heavier needle. And I'm just using normal white recent thread, so I'm not using bag weight thread either. This is just a nice lighter project and it doesn't have as many layers, so it doesn't need the thicker thread. So I'm going to chain stitch the second one and pop, pop it in as well and then swivel, needle down and pivot down the side and I'm just using my finger to help hold them together. You could also use pins if you wanted to um, or wonder clips or iron it further so it really doesn't move. Put some starch spray on there or something. All right, so that's my straps. I won't need them again until towards the end, but they're done. So I'm gonna pop them here. And I'm going to grab, this is my flat piece. And somewhere here, there should be another flat piece. So this is my flap. Um, if your fabric's directional, just take a moment to think about that uh, because we wanna sew the bottom edge. So I'm going to just put the right sides together on here. Oh, and I'm going to sneeze. Right. And then I'm going to stitch down. And then needle down and pivot. Oops. I just back stitch there because I moved the needle up. So I'm to make sure my stitches are right. And I'm going to stitch along here. Now, if you wanted to, you could curve these edges. So instead of sewing pointy edges, you could just, like, continue round and make them curved. I'm obviously not doing that today. One curve and one straight edge would be weird. But they don't have to be straight. They can be whatever shape you want. But since mine are pointy, I'm going to cut off some of the excess here and there. So I cut off all of that so that we're going to get a nice point. And then on an angle up like that. And then I'm going to put my finger into that corner and then grab it with my thumb and push it out. Same with the other end so that I can get nice pointy corners. You can also put your finger back in and just kind of scratch the seam. By scratching the seam, you're pushing it all the way out and it's going to sit nicer and flatter. So that is now going to be the flat part. So now I'm going to top stitch. So all my top stitching is always an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then needle down. I just want to make sure that this seam is rolled all the way to the edge. Now you can iron this. In fact, I probably recommend ironing it. Uh, but I can do it without an iron. 
I just roll the seam right to the edge. It's just going to take a little bit longer because I didn't iron it. I just have to be conscious. I have no idea how much bobbin thread I've got going today. I was sewing some other things before I started the video. I should be fine. Um, because this is a normal thread, it actually holds quite a lot on the bobbin. Back stitch. Right, so that's my flap now. So I'm just going to pop that one aside as well. And I'm going to grab my zipper pieces. So you should have two lining and then two outside pieces and a back piece. Now, just for something different, I didn't use lining fabric for the back. So when you zip it open, you're still going to see this just because I thought that would be a little bit fun. Uh, but the pattern does actually say to use a lining fabric. But I didn't have a lot of this fabric, so I wanted to try and use it all up. So now we just need to pick a zipper colour. I am thinking... No, I don't like green. Perhaps a light blue. No, I don't like that either. Pink doesn't really go. Oh, it's a hard choice. Maybe I'll go gold and yellow to match the flowers. So I'm using a size 5 zip, uh, but you can use any size zip you like. You just may have to adjust your back piece accordingly. So when I designed this pattern, what I actually did was I made the top half and then measured it to work out what size the back piece was. So if you're changing your zipper or changing anything like the dimensions of it, if you needed a bigger zipper pocket, I would make the top first and then work out what your back side has to be. So I'm just going to singe this so that it doesn't fray in the drawer. And I'm going to pack it up because it's one less thing I have to clean up later. And trust me, there's a lot of cleaning that needs to be done. Right. I'm also, just for funsies, going to use a white zipper. So it'll look a bit fun and a bit different. So I'm going to take my lining piece and my zipper, place them both right sides up. And then I'm going to make a zipper sandwich and grab this piece and put it right sides down. Now again, if your fabric is directional, please pay attention to the way the patterns are going. You want them all going the same way. So I'm just stitching this down with my foot resting against the zipper teeth, so pushing against it. Then I'm going to fold both sides back, which is not something we normally do. And then I'm going to top stitch so that both these are away from the zipper. Now, if you don't want your zip to go all the way to the top, you could also add zipper tabs to this. I personally didn't feel the need to put them in the pattern because I wouldn't do them. It's something I would normally skip. Uh, but if you're using a metal zipper, you may want to put the zipper tab so that when we put the binding on, the zipper's not in it. So then I'm going to grab my other lining piece and line that up. Now again, if your pattern's directional, line it up. Mine is not. I chose that deliberately to make this a little bit quicker. And then I want to make sure that the flowers are going the same way. Like that. And then I'm going to line those up. I always like to sit, uh, sew this with my zipper facing up. I just find it easier to rest against the teeth when it's right sides up. Uh, but you can stitch it from the other way. That's not a problem. I just find that everything lines up better if I'm up against the teeth. So then again, I'm going to turn and I'm going to pull both of these back like this and then top stitch. So you could iron this back if you want to. You could clip them together. You could do anything you like, really. And all of this is just 
just on a normal two and a half stitch length. I'm not doing anything fancy with my stitches on this. They're all just going to be the same size. With the top stitching, you could have put something more decorative if you want to. Now, this is the top for me. So I want to go to the bottom and crack the zip. And then we're going to feed it in one side. And I always do the left side first because I'm right-handed. So then I can push them. Oops. And drop the zip. I always drop something, don't I? Not deliberately, just because. So I'm going to put this on, and I put it on about halfway, and my fingers are actually stopping it from going down further. And then I stick my other finger on the top so that it can't escape up while I'm pushing at it. And I want both my teeth, if you look into there, both my teeth are even. And then I can just push and then wiggle the zip until it goes on. And so that's now on. That was nice and simple. So now I'm going to layer this on top of here, making sure that right sides and right sides are going in the same direction, like this. And I'm just going to baste all four sides so that it becomes one piece. Everything's easier to deal with when it's just one piece. I promise. So then again, line up all the edges. Oops. Not sure what I just did to my thread then, but it snapped or something. So I'm just basing all of this together with a top stitch so that I can treat it as a single piece of stuff. I highly recommend that you baste it as well. Basting is your friend. Okay, so now when you zip this open, you should see your fabric like that. Then I'm just going to trim off those tails, square up this end because I cut my zip crooked, which is fine. Okay, so now we can pop that one aside because that's ready for the later assembly, but we're not there yet. We want to take our main lining piece, which I have used the lining fabric color like that. And then we want to take our two pockets. Now, for this particular one, I have done one lining and one outer, and so that they will layer opposite so that you can see where all the pockets are. But that's not a big deal. In my pattern, I actually did them as completely different fabrics, which is why I wrote it like that, in case you wanted to have something a little bit more rainbow. So, I'm going to flip it over to the back, and then I'm going to manually roll hem this. So I'm going to fold it over, and then fold it over a second time. So I just want to use, it wants to be about a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back stitch. Now I've had a lot of practice in that I can do this by hand. Uh, you can either use your roll hem foot for this, or you could iron it so it sits where you want. If you do enough roll hems, without the feet, you actually get pretty fast at this. So I'm just basically trying to hide that raw edge. You could also overlock it or serge it and fold it down if you wanted to, if you don't want to do a roll hem. But it just gives a nice clean top edge like that. So I'm going to grab my second one and do this one as well. And again, I want to make sure I'm doing the top not the bottom. And the reason I didn't put any interfacing on this is because I don't want it too thick and heavy. It's already going to hold a lot of needles. And depending on what kind of needles you use, it could potentially get quite heavy. So I didn't think that this warranted more interfacing. But again, if you want to, you can. If you wanted to, you could sew two of these together, but again, that's just more bulk. 
Which is why I chose a roll hem top instead. Not really sure why I'm explaining that to you, but I'm doing it anyway. Okay. So now we just need to lay them up. So I've got my, I'm going to hold it sideways so you guys can actually pull twist so that you can see. All right. So this is my piece and I'm going to line this piece up along the bottom edge like so. And then I'm going to get my other one. So the, the bit that we've rolled goes to the top and we're just going to layer them like this so that the side, the bottom and the other side are all lined up like so. And then if you want to, you can grab a handful of Wonder Clips and clip them all together. And then we're going to base this in place. You want to make sure you get all the way up. Basting all the pieces like that. So now that that's all like clipped there together, we're just going to sew one eighth of an inch or top stitching, basting, it's all the same, around all three edges. But we don't have to go all the way up here because this is irrelevant. So I'm just going to start at this pocket. Okay. So I'm going to start with my needle down, back stitch just to hold it into place. Move my clips and I'm going to pivot this. And again, this is just turning it into one piece so that it doesn't all move in a minute when we start drawing and sewing all of our lines. And then when we get to there, we backstitch and pull it out. Right. So now technically we've just got these really big pockets. Now here's where you can get a little bit creative. So if you want to, if you're not putting needle knitting needles in this, if you're going to do paint brushes or makeup brushes or whatever you're going to do, you can actually just alter the size of your pockets. The measurements that I did, me and my mum worked out because she's the knitter. So we worked out how much of everything. So you can go from small needles on the left to large needles on the right. And so that's how we have worked out this sizing. Um, and the first one you have to remember that there's going to be um, binding here, which takes about half an inch of your space. So that's very, very important to remember to mark or add that into your marking when we do that. And so then I'm just going to go, I know it's backwards, but I'm going to go from right to left. And I'm going to just progressively get a little bit smaller after every few And I'm just getting smaller by like a quarter of an inch each time. So line it up. And you always want to um, mark it from bottom to top. And that way the um, thing doesn't pull. I don't know if you just saw me doing it top to bottom and it didn't really work out for me. Like that. And so then this one will look bigger because of our half inch that we need to leave. So they're the markings I'm going to put on. And again, you can change these to whatever suits your needs for your roll. Um, you could do pencils in this. You could do anything. Anyway, so now I'm going to, I'm always going to sew from bottom to top. So I'm just going to sew. I'm going to move that. I'm going to backstitch and then just sew up. And then backstitch up there and then take it out and trim off the tails. 
And we're going to do that for all of our markings. You have to make sure that you back stitch because it's locking your stitches in. And then we just come back to the bottom. And you want to move from one direction to the other. And then because I've used an erasable pen, once I iron this at the end, all of those markings will go away because I'm using a white thread. And because I'm using a light sewing thread, not a thick bag making thread, it's not completely hiding the marks, which doesn't matter because they'll go away. But just be aware of that. And a back stitch at the end. And keep an eye on your bobbin. You'll notice that I'm putting my finger into the top thread and then pulling it out a little bit more. That's so when I go back, I'm wasting less bobbin thread, but I've got a big enough tail that it shouldn't retract into the machine without me having to hold it. Because we all know I'm not one for holding it. So instead I just loop my finger in and pull it out a little bit more. And then I'm wasting very little bobbin thread. Now, as this gets uh, more and more across, you're just going to want to kind of roll it up so that the um, this isn't hitting your throat because it can distort your stitches if you're like halfway through and then it hits. So I'm getting to the bigger pockets now. Now, I just ran out of bobbin thread. So I'm going to hit pause because these ones take a long time. Uh, and then I'm going to oil my bobbin case and fill up my bobbin. Okay, so now I'm going to start probably four stitches back from where I ran out of thread and just back stitch to lock the old ones in. And then stitch up and back stitch. And I don't think that's stitching. I got a couple of stitches in and then it stopped. That'll be my bobbin misbehaving already. Now I didn't wind a totally full bobbin. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, I tell you that all the time. I never do a full bobbin because I find it gives me dramas and issues like right now. There we go. And I don't know if you can tell, but my machine sounds a lot quieter. So every time I do a new bobbin, I put a little bit of oil and it removes a lot of the noise because it's oiled and it's happy I can definitely hear the difference it is way way quieter so then we're going to just continue with the last few making sure we back stitch at both ends and then I'll come back and I'll trim off all the tails in one big swoop they're not currently in my way so they can wait just a minute and I'll do all them all at once just because that's a little bit more efficient okay trim that and that and then I'm just gonna go around and grab all the tails unroll it some of them are worse than others Oops. the reason we definitely want to chop these off is because when we're binding the edge they will be a nuisance so if they don't exist they can't annoy us all right so now that's the bulk of the roll done. So we're going to go back. We're going to start final construction. So I'm going to grab my zipper section. And so I obviously want the zipper to finish up. And we're going to attach it 
to the left hand side so we're just going to put right sides together and then if you want to you can grab some clips and clip that together so that everything lines up and nothing moves like this and if you've done all correct cutting it should be perfectly the right size if something's a little bit bigger or smaller we're just going to trim it so that they match and then I am going to stitch, back stitch. And I'm sewing with the pocket on top just because I want to. Uh, but you can sew it any way you like. And then pull that out. Trim off the tails again. And there you go. Now we've got our pocket attached. So grab your flap. Now with your flap, what you want to do is you want to line the flap edge up with that seam that we just did. So it wants to be matching on this end, not the other end, because we don't want our flap to be in the binding. So the way that I've designed this is you should have about half an inch. If you've done it all correctly and so then I'm going to baste this down as well because I like basting everything and as you can see I've got a little bit of excess I am going to chop that off in a minute but I'm going to base it all together first I'm going to base it from this side so that I can make sure I'm actually catching the bottom bit because it's the blue that's a little bit out and that's my fault from when I was cutting it I was definitely in a little bit of a hurry when I was doing this so now I can just come and trim that down so it matches the rest of the seams uh, I could have trimmed it before I attached it that also would have worked you could also make this flap longer this flap is mainly just so things don't fall out of the top um, because obviously the higher one they're more likely to be able to get out. So now this is what we should have. So it should just look very stripy and fantastic. So we want to take our back piece and again we want to make sure that the right side is up so I'm going to lay that wrong sides on the table and the right side is here away from me and then I'm going to take this and line it up on top like this and then we can just start clipping it all around. Now I've cut my, the way I've written the pattern, I've made it so no matter what seam allowance you do on everything, the, the piece will fit and then you can just trim it down. So I originally had it exactly for my settings, but uh, one of the testers found that my back piece was incorrect for her measurements, which is fine. So I've made the piece bigger and then you just trim off the excess, which shouldn't be a lot. But I figure this way, now, no matter what your seam allowance is that you choose to do, everything works out. So I'm just clipping all the layers together, except obviously when I get to this side, I'm going to do that one last because I'm going to trim it down first. You need a lot of clips. You could also just do this without the clips if you wanted to but I've committed to clipping now so that's what we're gonna do you could also basting spray this together if you wanted to um, I don't like basting new like, I don't use like using the basting spray near my machine uh, but I could just take it over the table and baste the back and then that would stick them together and then I could sew baste around the edge so I've chopped off my excess there and again, depending on what seam allowance you've used everywhere, 
will depend on if you, how much you have to chop off. And so now, because I've just trimmed that, I'm going to start here and I'm going to baste again. So basically we're sewing straight over the other stitches that we made that were basting stitches from when we did our pocket. But that's fine. Needle down. See how I didn't put my needle down there and it shifted. And then I'm going to stitch across the top. So we're pretty much just stitching over our previous basting stitches because we have to add another layer in. It may seem like a waste of thread basting it, but I promise it is easier to construct it with it rather than without. Needle down. You see what I did there? I had all the weight of this on the table so it wasn't dragging off. You don't want to be fighting your item, crafty, project, anything while you're making it. So sometimes it may look like a mess over here, but at least the weight is off the problems. Okay, so when we roll it, the pocket's going to be the first thing to roll. So we need to attach our um, ties to the opposite end. So the easiest way to do this is to fold this in half so that we can put them in the middle and again you don't have to put them in the middle but that's just what I do so there's the middle there so I'm just going to take the raw ends that we didn't finish from the ties and I'm going to face the sewn edge into the center just because I want them to look pretty and match and I'm just going to base them into that seam so then when I put the binding on, they're going to get caught like that. But we have to keep an eye on these. These from now on get quite sneaky and can sometimes fold up and you might stitch them in your binding. So you do have to be careful that you don't do that. And then I just need to find my binding. So I've said you need about two meters. But the easiest way to check if you've got enough is fold it in half and then just go across two edges. So this piece of white that I've got here is not quite enough, which is unfortunate because that's what I was going to use. So I might have to hit pause while I go and find... Oh, actually, here we go. I could do red. Red would look lovely. So this is a polyester binding. Um, so instead of making bias binding out of cotton, I can actually just use this. And all I'm going to have to do is fold it in half, like so. So we're going to use this because it's the white one that I had planned wasn't enough. And I've got plenty of that here. Now, I bought this from Vardman Threads. You can buy it um, in like 5 and 10 meter lots, I believe. And so now I'm just going to need to change over to red thread because I don't want white stitches on a red binding. It will show up all of the potential mistakes. So you always want to try and match your thread colour to your binding colour. Black is the most forgiving in that it will show up the least amount of issues. That's pink, so we're going to have to use this one. So I'm currently using an overlocking thread and just hoping that it's not going to keep snapping on me because I have run out of red reset thread and I'm not driving down the shop right now. I'm just going to go slowly and hope that this works. Never pull the knot through your needle when you're doing the pull through method like I do. Um, always just do it like one step before the needle because if you try and put the knot through the needle, you could bend or break your needle. Which is just silly. No need for that. Alright. Now, with the binding, there's a couple of ways you can do it. If you've made bias binding, you've ironed it in half, and then you iron it in half again so it's a double fold. 
I could also go and iron this in half if I wanted to, uh, but I'm not going to do that. And I'm also never going to start on a corner. It's very, very difficult to deal with stuff on a corner. So I'm going to start on the bottom here and about, I can tell you how far, seven inches from the corner is where I'm going to start. So I'm going to fold it in half and just clip it on. And I'm going to go ahead and do this along the whole thing. Now, if you're an advanced sewer and you do a lot of quilting, you could probably do this without clipping it. But I'm going to clip it to teach people. That's what we're doing today. So then when we get to the corner, I'm going to hold it with my fingers and I'm going to open it out and I'm going to push to create a mitered corner. So what I did there was I held it right at the edge and then I open this out, push it down the center and then fold it around to get my nice little diagonal corner piece. And then I'm going to stick a clip right on top of it so it can't come undone. And then again, come down. Now I do actually have a binding tool on my other machine, my big industrial cylinder arm machine that would do this for me. Um, and I do plan on showing you guys that with a bag very soon because I have a couple that I'm going to bind. But for this project, we're just going to do it on this machine. I've actually got a double fold bias thing. So you can get these, you can get so many cool tools. So this will actually take a two inch piece of fabric and fold it in, in half and then in half again and then sew it straight onto your garment so that you could just bind everything, which is wonderful. Uh, but it takes a lot of setting up. So it's not, in my opinion, it's not worth it for a single project. You're, or you'd go, you want to use it for like a lot of your project. So again, I'm just clipping, but I will do a sewing canning video on how to use that as well. If you guys are interested. When I used to make a lot of aprons, it was amazing because I could just sew, you know, binding for days. But for this project, because it's not a very big project and I'm only making one, it's not worth it. If I was uh, produ production sewing these, what I would do is I would curve the edges so that I don't have to have a mitered corner and then I could use the binding tool quite easily. Because tight corners are also difficult with the binding tool. They can be done, but they don't look as neat in my opinion. People are very, very scared of binding and I'm here to prove to you that it's not that scary. There's lots of bags that have binding and I can see why they have their perks. So when I make, I'm going to make a dance bag which is basically just a duffle, but I'm going to show you why it's an awesome thing to use binding because it saves so, so much time. All right, so I'm getting there. I'm up to the next corner, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to squish it in half to the edge and then open it out and then squish it in half to get my mitered corner and then put a clip directly on it so it doesn't get destroyed. So we're nearly there. It is looking lovely. I think red was actually quite a good choice. Better than white. White gets dirty too easy. And the reason I'm putting so many clips is because I don't want it to shift. And because it's uh, polyester binding, it's not going to stretch at all either. So I can kind of tug on it as hard as I want to, and it's not a problem. So this is my last corner. So I'm going to put a clip just before it, and then again, pinch it, open this out, push it over, and then you've got a nice mighty corner. Now that takes a little bit of practice, so please don't be like disheartened if you don't get it as quick as that. I have done this a lot. 
because I bind the aprons that I did. There's a video of the apron actually. And before I learned how to do it without clips, I used to sit and pin it and clip it. So an apron used to take me about four hours to sew because I spent most of my time pinning things. Sometimes pins are worth it and sometimes they're not. For binding, I, I do think if you're starting out using binding, it's a good idea to pin it or clip it because it can get a bit tricky. All right, so I'm back to the start. So what I want to do is I want to cut just a little bit past where it's going to overlap. And because this is polyester, I am going to melt it. But you don't have to do that if it's cotton. And then if it's cotton, you just tuck under the raw edge and you can clip it on. I've actually probably got too much overhang here, so I'm going to trim some more off. And then just melt it. Because this is polyester and I've melted it, I don't have to tuck under my raw edge. I can just sit it straight on top like that put a clip on it so now everything is binded I'm going to bind it and sew it with the outside up so that I don't get my ties but you can stitch it the other way if you prefer and I'm going to start this side of the join so I don't want to do the join because in case I have to adjust anything if I've pinned that wrong anywhere I've got wiggle room to fix it but if I start on there then you're just going to have like a loop or whatever. So I'm going to start just off and I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm just going to stitch around. When I get to the corner, I'm going to needle down and pivot like we always do. And I'm going to put the weight of this because now we've got all the clips on there as well. And I'm just kind of going to throw it on the table pretty much. Now the reason I'm stitching so slowly is because I don't want my thread to snap because of the thread that I'm using. And then I'm going to move it again because the weight was shifting on me again. Needle down, pivot, and again, put the weight on the table where possible. Never sit on the end of your table. Try and sit in the middle or to the right-hand side so that you've got space for everything to sit. See what I mean about that pesky little tie? Sometimes it just tries to sneak in there. Also, clean up your um, clips or pins as you go. If you go slowly enough, you can actually get a rhythm where you don't have to stop because you've got time to pull off your clip. Till, of course, we get to the corner because we're going to pivot. So you want to put your needle down for that. There's a lot of places that pre-make binding for you. Um, in Australia, there's a place in Ringwood. I can't remember what it's called at the moment. Um, but they they will make meat. Like, you can buy 10 metres of uh, poplin binding. So there's a really cool rainbow poplin at Spotlight. And I reckon they just bought that and turned it into binding. But it just means that you don't have to sit and cut it on the bias and iron and stuff which makes it a little bit easier and quicker right so I'm nearly back to the start so I'm going to stitch over and get all the way back to the actual start now if you're worried about the join you can actually come back and stitch across it like this if you are concerned that it's going to move. So you can just back stitch over it like that if you want to. It's not totally necessary, but if it gives you peace of mind, you go right ahead. 
And then we flip it over and we see all the spots that I missed because I didn't have the clips on properly. And this happens to me all the time, mainly because I'm too busy talking. So from here to here, I missed. It also could be something to do with the fact that I didn't iron it in half, but because it's polyester, there was no guarantee it was going to do that anyway. And then I also missed a little bit here in the middle. So I'm just going to clip it in place again, but I'm going to stitch from this side so I can see where my holes are. So I'm just going to start here, back stitch, stitch this bit down. Like that, and then back stitch to finish and trim those tails. Now, because my thread color matches really, really well, you can't even see that I just did that. If you weren't watching this video, you wouldn't know I'm doing it. Um, and these things happen. It's because I wasn't paying a hell of a lot of attention clipping because I was too busy talking. But it's also good that I make mistakes so I can show you how to fix them. Because this will happen a lot on your first time binding. Unless you pin it, but pinning it takes so long. And the reason I put a clip at the start and the end is because it's just easier to see where the gap is. Ah, back stitch. So that's it. That is now all done. So I know it looks really, really big, but it will fit your tallest needles. Oh, there's another spot there. Of course there is. There we go. We'll just trim off the tails. Now if you have a look, you actually cannot even see my stitching, let alone the fact that sometimes I had to double stitch it. And so then you can just roll it up from this end, like so. And then to tie it off, you grab one tie from one direction, one from the other. You can wrap it all the way around and go back to the join side if you want to, and then just tie a little bow. And when it's got needles in it, it obviously sits a lot straighter because they are solid needles. But there you go. One needle roll or brush roll or whatever you want, really. I hope this tutorial taught you something new. Um, and so until next time, guys, bye-bye.